G'day, welcome to Farrier's Life. So in this video, I just want to give my initial observations now that these cadavers are all cleaned up, uh, a little bit more uh, suitable for handling. I'm going to put some back in the freezer so we can extend their life and use them uh, at a later date. But before I do that, I want to give you a good overview. I got eight in total. And again, just to touch base on uh, the video before we study the horse's hoof because we need to trim it we need to look after it we need to shoe it we ask horses to do all kinds of different jobs and we get them living in all different types of environments outside of what you would consider sort of a natural environment uh, doing things that are unnatural for the horse to do so we need to understand the anatomy so that we can keep those animals sound and healthy and help them out if they do get injured or have a problem we can maybe uh you know sort that problem out prevention is the main thing uh at the end of the day prevention is the main thing so there's so much we can do and so much we can learn and understand which helps keep this structure uh as healthy as possible so the saying no hoof no horse is exactly is exactly true if it can't walk and get around comfortably then then you have a lot of problems so first thing i want to say is i live here in new zealand and it is incredibly wet climate new zealand is a very coastal country it's a very temperate country we get a lot of rainfall and even in the summertime when we have extended periods of clear blue skies and sunshine there is a morning dew which just saturates the gl the grass so it is very wet all the time and you can tell from the tissue my initial uh, observations is you know the frogs aren't very hard you've got flaky chalky tissue um, you know you've got big flaps of sort of rotten decaying tissue on the frogs like this uh, and you'll notice they smell um, quite fusty and that's just because there's a lot of bacteria and thrush and I've cleaned these up considerably like and they've been sat here for um, half a day just aer aerating out and drying. Um, but even when I'm out trimming and shoeing other people's horses, uh, you know, when they're alive, you pick out the foot and it stinks and you can scrape all this and it just it's like a powder. It just flakes off. And that's due to the fact that it is a wet climate here in New Zealand and horses really have evolved in very either cold dry environments um, sort of tundra type environments where they move a hell of a lot so all this overgrown tissue doesn't get a chance to get overgrown it doesn't get soft and bend away so we're going to cover a lot in all this this series of videos but these are them and um, yeah this you can see some seriously overgrown bars here, a big flare on this side. These two are from the same horse, and you might be thinking, well, why is one white and why is one black? Well, this is a front foot. You can tell because it's got a, a more rounded shape, and this is a hind foot. You can see it's more arrow-shaped, more pointy. It's wider here and narrower here to a more of a point, which is a... Which is the confirmation of a hind foot. And this one's just got no pigment in it. So it's a white foot and a black foot. And you know, horses can have one black foot and three white feet, or one black foot, uh, you know, or one. They can have all variations two white front feet, one white back feet, whatever. So um, these are two from the same horse one front foot, one back foot. Again, um, these are the wrong way around. These two here, these are from a young horse. I can tell as a young horse because they've got lots of different growth patterns. The size of them, it's sort of probably a yearling. Uh, and when I was taking the skin off these bones before I wrapped it, this one in particular had this huge big lump on its bone, this real hardened uh, abnormality on its cannon bone. So for whatever reason, this horse ceased to be, and again, you can see this is a, a front foot, very overgrown through the toe, and this is a hind foot, again, another black foot and another white foot, same as 
same as this horse, uh, but much smaller and in its developmental stages still. But all in all, a reasonable confirmation for uh, all considering that they're very long. <clears throat> what you'll notice as well is the hind feet have a much longer cannon bone. So this one's shorter, this one's much longer. Exactly the same in, in this. You've got a shorter cannon bone on the front and a much longer one on the hind. And then we move on to this last pair of feet. These look like two front feet. Um, they appear to me to be two front feet, but these this one's the most overgrown. You can see huge lengths in their bars starting to fold over. Reasonable confirmation all in all. Um, and as far as I'm aware, these are all thorough this thoroughbreds, two th thoroughbreds, young thoroughbred. This is not a thoroughbred, uh, and then this one came from a thoroughbred. As you can see here, big flaps of frog, lots of thrush. This is um, degenerative tissue in the frog there. And the last foot I've got to show you is a very unusual horse's foot because it's a cow's foot. <laughs> and you can see cows are very different. And for whatever reason, this got put into uh, the box of feet that that um, that I received. But, you know, I'm pretty glad I did, actually, because it gives me a chance to show you what a cow's foot's hoof's like. They've got two toes with the remnants of two toe, another two toes up here. So... Um, you know, a horse is a, is one toed, and all of the other toes you can find in various different uh, underdeveloped states throughout the rest of the leg. You know, they they predominantly evolved and use one toe. Cows and all the bovines and lots of other animals like goats and sheep, uh, camels all developed a, a two toed mechanism. So very interesting. Um, I'll just flip these over quickly and we'll have a look from the front <clears throat> here we are you can see the two toes on the cow this one very much more overgrown it's pushing on this one and separating these two toes quite a bit yeah, you can see how overgrown this is you can see it grows nice and tight and then bows and bends away it started to break and chip and there's a crack just here forming well it's already well under the way of forming Another, another one here, cracking the toe. You've got this side of the hoof wanting to go this way, this side of the hoof wanting to go that way. A crack forming in the toe. Another crack 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 in the toe here, which formed an abscess inside the foot and has created this this split here. This This split would have blown out here. An abscess is a big pus bubble that forms inside the foot through due to one form of damage or the other. And the only way, uh, generally the only way it can relieve itself is to blow out where it's soft. The tissue gets soft so you end up with a, a crack forming, it gets infected, it swells up. Sometimes it can pop out through the crack, the existing crack. Most times it will travel up the foot and it will blow out up here. And then as the hoof grows, we end up with this scarred piece of hoof, which is split, that eventually grows down and 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 eventually gets trimmed out of the foot. So, yeah, we're definitely going to be doing a, a video on seedy toe, white line disease, splits, cracks and flares for sure, because we've got loads of examples of them here. Another split in the toe, another split in the quarter. Uh... Again, look how steep this side of the foot is, and look how angled and flared this side of the foot is. There we have it. A bit of an overview, and we'll go into a little bit more detail on all these issues in later videos. So thanks for watching, and stick around for the next ones.